Hey guys, it's Keith with Bob CNC, and I'm out in the garage today with a new project. It's based on this coin that you can see on your screen. This is a two cent piece that was minted in 1864. And the reason I found out about this coin is I was doing some research on the motto, In God We Trust. Uh, found out that it wasn't uh, the motto of the United States until 1956, I think it was. And I also found out that in 1864, uh, that was the first time that that motto had ever been uh, imprinted on a coin. But anyway, I really love the look of this coin, and I got to thinking this would really make an interesting project for uh, Vetric. And so what I decided to do was to do a tracing of this, and I'm going to bring up what the uh, toolpath looked like when I got done. This is a simple of engraving of the uh, finished tracing. I put a hole in the center of it. I'm going to turn this thing into a clock face. I've got a uh, clock case that I've got to build and some things that I've got to put together. When I have it all done, I'll let you know what, how it uh, comes out. It's going to be a really cool clock. But in any case, uh, what I want to talk about is how, how the tracing was made. Now, what I'm going to do here is we're going to start a brand new project, and it's going to be 12 inches by 12 inches. I'm using quarter inch Baltic birch to make the clock face. Uh, the zero position is going to be at the uh, top of the uh, work surface. And the uh, work zero, the XY position, is going to be in the lower left-hand corner like normal. Uh, nothing about modeling since we're not working with the 3D model. And uh, material settings, well, that's uh, whatever you happen to like. And so I'm going to say OK to that. And what I need to do now first is to bring in the uh, image of that coin. And I'm going to go up to here to the file operations, this folder on the end that says import bitmap and that's going to take me to a folder where I keep all the stuff I have for working on uh, Vetric and there's my coin. I'm going to uh, select that so all my handles are showing and then holding the shift key out I want to make this coin a little bit bigger, going to be a little bit easier with the trace. Now when you're dealing with an image in uh, Vetric you can use a little tool it's called trace bitmap and when you click on it uh, it will gray out the image you want to trace showing that it's ready to process it for tracing but there's a problem with this particular coin and that's because uh, there aren't any contrasting colors everything is either a bronze or a gold or a copper or a kind of a brown or yellow or, and varying shades of the of the same basic color and so when you try to do a bitmap trace you don't get a clear picture of the coin and if you try to do this in black and white once again you run into the same problem and if you do try a bitmap trace what you're going to end up with is a freckled mass of uh, all kinds of disconnected vectors that you can't do anything with and when you run into a problem like that uh, you don't have to dismay because you've got some really cool tools in Vetric in fact four simple ones that you can use and uh, we're going to use the uh, draw circle tool uh, to create some vectors we're going to use the uh, draw polyline tool uh, draw an arc tool and draw a curve tool now I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and it's really amazing to me that all of this was hand carved uh, by a master carver who made the dies for this coin. Uh, I have trouble striking a straight line with a ruler and what this guy did was absolutely spectacular. But I want to reduce this to simple geometric shapes and the first thing I notice here there are a lot so in order to highlight those so that I can deal with them at a later time I'm going to start placing circles on the work. I'm about in the center of that little piece right there. I'm going to draw this out a little bit and let go and uh, 
hit the space bar. No, I didn't want to do that. Actually, I want to hit escape and get out of it completely. And, uh, oh, I can save that circle. I can use that somewhere else. I think down at the bottom, I have another one I have to deal with. But when I look at this, what I want to do is I want to make sure that that circle is appropriately sized. I'm going to hold down the shift key to keep my center there. And you can see that it is shrinking. There we go. That's right about the size that I need for that particular piece. If I go down to the bottom and I find this rogue circle that I brought down there, it looks like there's something like a pendant at the bottom of this coin. I'm going to grab this circle, and, and that's almost sized just about right. And I think I'm going to shrink it just a little bit. And a lot of this kind of stuff is just uh, really a matter of taste. And uh, you can do anything you want because, after all, it's your work and this is what you're messing with. Okay, so now I'm going to escape out of that. I'm going to come down here, and I notice that there are a lot of little berries here. And so I'm going to make some circles. And I'm not going to bore you with all this. Just to simply say that what I'm doing is I'm looking for all those circular features that I'm going to need to trace. And so I start with that. Now, after I have all those filled in, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on these leaves. And this looks like it could be really intimidating. But let me start with this cluster down here. This is really much simpler than it appears. Now, I need to shrink that just a bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an arc tool. And I'm simply going to grab roughly at the point of the stem. Come about halfway down the leaf, down to the end. I'm going to hit the space bar so I can start a brand new arc at the same spot. I'm going to come up about halfway on this leaf, then all the way back to the stem. Boom. I'm going to hit the escape key so you can see what's happened. Now, this isn't exactly perfect. And you don't have to let this thing make you nervous. What you can do is select a line, hit N to enter node editing, because it looked like this arc was way too wide. And all I have to do is grab the center of that arc and draw it in. And it seems like I should be out here covering a little more uh, territory out there. So I'm simply going to move that end of my arc there. And that's going to work. Now to join these together, it's really simple. Select the line. I'm going to select the other line. Then I'm going to come down here to this Edit Objects tool, Join or Close Vectors, by moving the ends to a common point, and click it. And you can see that those two vectors have been joined together. Now I can repeat this process with every leaf, Sometimes I'm not going to make a full arc because I'm just starting and picking up a bit of an end there and coming up and being here. And then also you notice there will be some uh, circles that I will have put in up there. But also I want to catch the, the shape of this stem, this vein right down the center of this leaf. Now I'm not interested in making an absolute perfect copy. Um, I think if maybe if I was doing like a, a really precise 3D model, I'd be thinking about something like this. But for my application, making a clock face, I just kind of want to get close. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that arc again. And I'm going to come up here, hit the center, hit the end of the vein, space bar, start another arc come up, hit the center, but I'm not going to join them at the top here. I'm going to leave this open. I don't have to have closed vectors here because I'm not doing any pocket uh, uh, carving. I'm not going to do any V carving. This is all going to be just a quick trace, but I am going to join these two together and go right back down to Close the vectors. Boom. Now, this is still an open vector because of the, or this end down here. But I have this joined here. Now, 
That's one operation using the um, arc tool. Another thing that you're going to have to do is you have to replicate these numbers. Now, there's a couple things to do here, but I really think, well, yeah, I think the simplest thing is going to be to draw the number. And so I can use the draw polyline tool and I can catch the top of the four. I can come over, hit that side of the four, come down, pick this up, come over, drop down, come back. Mm, that's about right. Drop straight down. Come over here. Pick up this leg. Drop down. Come underneath. Come up. Now there's a benefit to tracing a letter than trying to replicate it uh, by finding a font that's close and then maybe manipulating that font. And I'll show you in just a second here as I bring these together. Escape. I have to do something in the middle there. So I'm going to go back to that draw polyline tool. I'm going to pick up at the top. I'm going to maintain something of a parallel line and across the bottom. Try to stay parallel, then up to the top. Well, it's kind of good enough for who it's for. And then I'm going to hit escape. And now what I can do here is as I see, I really caught the look of that number. Now I can click and I can see that all my vectors are connected here and here. I'm going to kind of select this entire number and I'm going to go over here and type in and do a node edit, and you'll notice that I only have one, two, three nodes on the inside of the four. I've got a start, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever. So I, I only have a few nodes for that number, whereas if I try to select a font to, to uh, fit that number, and then you do a note edit on, on it, you could find that it would have maybe three or four, maybe even five times the number of nodes, depending on how the letters have been uh, replicated in the uh, text file that you have. But this is just a really simple way to do that. Now, another thing I have to pick up, for example, is this arrowhead. And this is really simple, too. Once again, draw a polyline. I'm going to start up at the point. I'm going to draw down to the corner. I have a, looks like a relatively sharp corner there. I'm going to come over here to another corner and then up to the top of the arrow. Click. So now I have the arrowhead done and I can do the same thing with the shaft. And over, up, Click, escape, here we go. And I have the outline of the arrow picked up. What I'm going to use to try to catch this banner is I'm going to use the draw curve tool. Now, another thing I could do if I wanted is I could take an arc and I could do the same thing, hit on the end, hit about in the middle, hit close to the end, space bar, do the same thing on the bottom, boom, in the middle, over on the end, space bar, or I could trace out, close, I could actually trace out the shape of the banner with this tool right here uh, for drawing curves. And I'm going to pick that up here. I'm going to come over here because there's a curve and it comes around here. Then it loops over here. I'm going to pick it up in about the center. I'm going to go over here. Very faintly, I can see their curve coming over here and around the corner and back like this because it's picking up kind of a fold in this banner. I'm going to bring it around there. I'm just going to stop that for the fun of it. I'm going to pick up my draw arc tool. I'm going to grab on 
one side of the bottom of this banner to the middle, find the other end over here, hit escape, I'm going to come over and pick up a draw polyline tool and I'm going to connect some lines here and do the same thing over here down to the end, connect, space bar, that gets me out of that and it looks like I've got to finish this side over here. But then, once again, I've got to make a determination if I want to try to draw the letter, which is probably going to give me the cleanest look, or try to find a, a font and replicate it and size it to fit. And uh, anyway, just using those basic tools, um, let's go over here. I'm going to get out of this. And I'm going to reopen my Vetric Aspire. And uh, I have the coin tracing I did. And you can see in the 2D view, I was able to replicate all the letters really well. I was able to get all the details in for all the leaves and the berries. Uh, I was able to replicate the design on the shield. I was able to catch just straight details and all of these nice flowing details on the shield. And what's really cool, I was even able to replicate this dental detail. And all that involved doing was creating a circle. And then I took a small rectangle, approximately the size of a little bit of the dental detail. And then I made uh, 200 copies of it using this tool down here, an offset and layoff, which uh, allows you to create an array of shapes around a curved surface. And it set those 200 pieces right where I wanted them. And uh, when I compare it to the coin, it comes out looking really close. And so anyway, that's how I got there. If you guys have any questions about this kind of stuff, you can get a hold of me at the help desk at bobcnc.com or drop me a line at Keith at bobcnc. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.